Hi there, welcome back, or if you're brand new, welcome. It's Ilan here with another video, as I get comfy. I wanted to do a tag that's been on my mind for a while, and that is LS's uh, makeup aesthetic tag. So she has, let's see here, 10 questions. And they are very, in my opinion, challenging questions, and I thought I would tackle them. So if you're interested to see what my answers are to this tag, then this is a good video to watch. So the first question that Elle has for us is, how would you describe your personal aesthetic or style when it comes to makeup? I like clean lines, I like color, and I like makeup that sends the message that I want to send on a given day or occasion. So I will tailor my makeup to what it is that I'm doing in a given day, whether I'm doing videos, whether I'm uh, coaching or public speaking, or going to be out and about, I want to make sure that I put makeup on that is comfortable for me for a given situation. Not so much comfortable for other people, but where I'm going to feel good about the choice that I made for any given day. And I also have uh, been known to do a neutral look for part of the day and then go uh, very colorful later on in the day using my neutrals as a, as a a base for a colorful look over top. So that would be what my description would be. Who or what has influenced your stylistic choices? Wow, well I would say that over the years different people have um, influenced my stylistic choices. I like clean lines, I like classic and editorial, so I will like, you know, a, a beautiful classic looking model with hair back and very minimal makeup just as much as I will like a Madonna or Lady Gaga look. I don't have, I don't pigeonhole my options into one or the other, I like quite a gamut but it, I enjoy statements, whether it's an understatement or an overstatement. I want to feel like someone is presenting themselves intentionally. Number three, what are some of your previous makeup phases? Well, I'm sort of sporting one <laughs> right now. I don't usually wear this kind of liner, this much liner, but when I was 15, I was limited in what I could wear as far as makeup was concerned just because my skin did not like it. And so I would wear lip glosses because my lips could handle it. And I also wore a lot of liner and mascara. So liner and mascara and a lip gloss here and there was pretty much everything I was wearing. I was white as a ghost, <laughs> didn't, didn't wear blush, didn't wear any sort of foundation. I didn't have really problem skin, so that was not a concern for me. And when I got a little bit later in my 20s, I did do my brows as well, and I started wearing some gold eyeshadow, you know, 20 to 35, 25 to 35, started wearing uh, gold eyeshadow on days where my eyes were um, okay with, with me putting something on. And for lipstick, I've always been very minimalistic for lipstick, preferring um, just uh, glosses or even just plain um, lip balm. Nothing much. So lipstick lasted me a very long time. Right. Number four. What combination of existing brands would make up your perfect brand? If I could combine somehow the products Urban Decay puts out as far as the edgy side of things with the packaging aesthetic of Guerlain, I think I would really like the result. 
but I would still want all the colorful options that I have with Urban Decay with the classy look of Guerlain. I mean, there are a few products from Guerlain that I would really like to have um, just the, because the packaging is, is beautiful. And, and I have tried samples. I mean, Guerlain is a good brand. Um, but if I could have a mix of those two, that would be beautiful. I, I think that that would be um, a line that I would call my own. Uh, question five is name five products that define your makeup style right now. All right, so I took out uh, five brands here, just um, a palette or some products of each just to show you. So I would definitely say Tarte. I uh, really like what this brand has to offer. Urban Decay. Anastasia because I like how this brand puts color together and the fact that they're willing to try new things despite being a little bit more on the traditional makeup brand style. I like the idea behind Buxom and the fact that Buxom does things a bit uh, differently and gives a little bit more control to the user with its interchangeable palettes. I think that's fantastic and their lipsticks are great. And then I would also add in the Becca brand. I love what they do with their packaging and their product quality is um, fantastic. So when I look at the question and it's like what defines your makeup style, I feel like those brands are definitely on the very very short list when it comes to what I gravitate towards and what I th just 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 comes to mind uh, very easily. I love the quality. I love what they how they do things as a brand in general. There are some favorites from other brands that I could name, but if I'm looking for brands in general, those are the five that would come to mind. Number six: What kind of style or aesthetic do you wish you could pull off? I love green eyeshadow and because I have green eyes I find that there are a number of green eyeshadows that I can't pull off. They don't look right like if I try an aquamarine or I try a forest green they seem to clash with my eye color even though with green eyes your, your green eyes tend to, to, to change depending on the eyeshadow but sometimes the green eyeshadows, some of the green eyeshadows, I love the color in the pan, I try to put it on my eye and I kind of go, ooh, that does not look good. So that's probably the one, the one look that I would like to pull off. Some days I'd like to have brown eyes because I would really like to wear more green eyeshadow. When I find a green eyeshadow that I can pull off, I keep it <laughs> because I like to be able to wear it. Number seven. What style are you over? And when I read this question the first time around, when I read the, the 10 questions, I had trouble answering it. And I, I'm still kind of stuck. I like to rotate through looks. I think every look that goes comes back. And I'm not going to say that I have um, specific looks that I think just need to die. <laughs> and I think that every um, person can pull off different looks whether they're on trend or not. So I'm going to say uh, no to this question because I don't want any look to die. I think uh, to each his own. And I like variety. I think that individuality in makeup is super important and I want to see everything. So that. Uh, number eight. Who are some of your favorite makeup artists? I have um, quite a few. So let me just go through these. Nikia Joy, who is an Australian YouTuber. I like her aesthetic and 
appreciate that she has an aesthetic that I would not wear, but that really complements her face, and I think she's very talented. I And plus, I love the Aussie accent, so that helps too. So I would definitely um, suggest Nikia Joy is one to watch. Nikki Tutorials, I think that her aesthetic is one that is beyond where I want to do my face makeup, but I appreciate her creativity and how she gets inspiration and just creates an eye look based on some, some source of inspiration. That is, her creativity encourages me to be a bit more creative. Angelica Nickvist. I appreciate the fact that she goes for color and when she, well, she goes for color every day, but she goes hard for color and that that is her everyday makeup look. I think that is fantastic. I admire that and I get a lot of inspiration from her. Lauren May Beauty, I have never seen someone sport pink eyeshadow the way this woman does. She does a fantastic job. And she's also a makeup artist, and so she not only is quite creative with her own makeup, but she has a lot of tips and tricks and suggestions for us as her audience, and I really appreciate that. And I'm going to say a couple more. LS. I will never be disappointed when I see her chan t take a look at her channel and see what she's decided to put together. I find her channel refreshing, and that's part of why I wanted to answer this, uh, this tag of hers. I like her looks, I'm always curious to know what she's going to come up with next, and she's never boring with her eye looks. I also have another Canadian YouTuber, and that is Drea CN. Drea authentically loves makeup. She constantly switches it around. She never seems to have the same look twice, and I appreciate her I appreciate her love for makeup. It is infectious. It makes me want to go straight to my makeup counter and, and try something out. And her interest in exploring new things, trying new things, and being very authentic about what does and does not work for her personal style is really, really nice. So I really like her stuff. And I need to mention Wayne Goss. Wayne Goss tends to go for more natural looks and tips for natural makeup or, or glam evening makeup that's not over the top. But his tips and tricks when we're trying to perfect a, a natural look or a very flattering look where we're not trying to make a specific statement, we just want our look but better. He is a very good makeup artist to, um, to consult, and he keeps it very real, short and sweet, and I very much appreciate that. Number nine, do you have any favorite editorial slash avant-garde makeup looks? When it comes to editorial makeup, I default to makeup looks that would be for special event slash festival slash Halloween kind of uh, kind of makeup. Those are the looks I have no problem spending two, three hours creating a look and I'm not even going anywhere. So the, the, the editorial type of looks that I'm most interested in tend to be the, the extremes. I don't tend to go for editorial looks that are still traditional makeup looks. If I'm going to go for a traditional makeup look that is colorful, I'm going to wear it out. And number 10, what is your favorite time period for makeup? And then what is my least favorite period, favorite period for makeup? I am probably going to say the more oppressive times for makeup, so I would suggest the around the the Great Depression, so 20s, 30s. I think that there were fewer options, fewer safe products, fewer options for women to express themselves, 
and and really no not so much in, as in, in means for the general population to go and play and experiment. And my favorite, probably the 1990s, and if we take a look at the style of Madonna back then, I there was a lot there was just a lot of color in the like late 80s early 90s a lot of a lot of color you you could get away with neon you could get away with with uh neutrals you could get away with pretty much anything and you could get away with big bad stuff so you big hair big brows big bold looks bright bright lipstick bright um nail polish and it was almost like over the top was the norm. And I think that that allowed people to experiment because there was nothing that was kind of off limits. And so, not that I would like all of those looks to come back, but I did like that sense of freedom at that time that, that that era represents. I mean, we look at the clothing even from back then now and kind of go, oof. But you could do a lot of things that would be unusual or unexpected now. I think there's a lot of focus on beauty now and perfection, whereas then the imperfect was okay as long as it was showing your personality and your your preferences through. So the... Um, the extremes and imperfection were seemed pretty freeing at that time. So there you have it, my answers to LS's 10 questions. If you are interested, take a look on YouTube for the makeup aesthetic tag. A lot of people have answered these questions and I would love to hear your answers to those 10 questions, either down below in the comments or um, in your own video on YouTube. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And also, if you like the content on this channel, I would appreciate if you would consider subscribing. So for now though, I will say thank you for watching. See you in the next video. And in the meantime, take care.